Welcome to our Taking Stock video for the week ending the 16th of June, 2023. I'm Ken Trin, Head of Research at Stock Doctor, and today I'm joined by our Senior Equities Analyst, Jason Yin, to stream to your thing share market. Great to have you back on board, Jace. It's a pleasure to be here, Kay. But before we get started, just a reminder that the information provided today is of a generic nature and therefore shouldn't be considered personal advice. Shares are volatile, so any charts, tables you see shouldn't be relied upon as a guide for future performance. Well, Jace, our local Australian market, uh, it continues to trend sideways and it's grappling with uncertainties surrounding inflation and interest rate expectations. And the Aussie unemployment rate, it's recently dropped to 3.6% in May, and that's down from 3.7% the month before. So this is an ongoing trend that's uh, really putting pressure on the RBA to hike interest rates further. So Jace, how about the situation in the US? Well, Ken, in the US, inflation took a dip in May, and this bolstered the case for the Federal Reserve to halt their interest rate hikes this week. Year-on-year -year inflation in the US is now at the lowest level since March 2021 at 4%, and this indicates a steady decline since it peaked last year. This development has also given a boost to the US market, with the S&P 500 showing very strong performances over the week. The comparison chart on screen showcases this, comparing the All Ordinaries Index in the black with the S&P 500 in green. But we must not overlook the fact that core inflation figure, which excludes volatile food and energy prices, actually rose 0.4% in May, and this led to an annualized rate of 5.3%. This exceeded the market's expectations and remains well above the Fed's target range of 2 to 3%. Yeah, very interesting, Jace. Um, you know, we tried to separate the facts from the noise there, but uh, we've also seen um, the FOMO factor or fear of missing out uh, driving US markets upwards as well. And it seems that fund managers are rushing to gain exposure to the AI or artificial intelligence theme, which is pushing up tech stocks. And unlike Australia, though, technology represents a substantial weight to the S&P 500 index at around 20%. And you can see the significant divergence between the US market performance versus our market, as you've shown there, Jace. Uh, and this is why it could be beneficial for investors to really have exposure to US markets through our managed funds. But of course, we cannot be too complacent here and always make sure we prepare for risks ahead. So, Jace, what do you see as the primary risk for the market on the horizon? Well, that's a good question, Ken. Some of the looming risks include high inflation, which might push central banks to be more inclined towards listing rates. A global recession is not out of the question. Escalating geopolitical conflict, especially in Ukraine and possibly in China as well and also systematic credit events like those that we've seen in the US banking system. We also need to keep a close eye on the growing AI and tech bubble, like you said, Ken. Yeah, so Jace, um, with these potential threats, though, it's also important for us to really build that strong portfolio to navigate these choppy waters. And uh, the key here is not letting these risks sway your emotions or long-term investment strategy. Remember, equities can be quite volatile. So it's crucial to decide on your allocation based on your risk profile and also your stage of life. Always remember that investing is a long-term game, typically spanning at least five years. And you can see the benefit of this with the chart on screen, which looks at the long-term performance of star growth stocks, and which is coinciding also with major systematic events. And the market um, eventually recovers. You'll be rewarded by really not acting irrationally at any period when there's significant volatility. Yeah, this is a really good chart, Ken. I mean, what it tells viewers is that instead of trying to speculate on systematic events, instead focus on what you can control. And that includes risk management and the quality of the stocks within your portfolio. So what does that actually mean? It means to stick to financially sound businesses that have strong market position and also stable cash flows. This strategy should help you weather the market's volatility. It also makes sense for you to diversify your portfolio across 15 stocks, which reduces your exposure from both a stock and also sector perspective. And of course, uh, we have a selection of high quality star stocks for you to choose from. 
but you should also remain active in managing your portfolio. Utilize our alert tools to keep up to date with the announcements or fundamental changes to your stocks and uh, have some cash reserves to leverage oversold opportunities. Remember, we've got a powerful stock filter tool that can help identify those potential opportunities such as companies with positive earnings revisions, but have been sold down heavily in recent months. You can refer to Tim Stocks with potential screens to look for those opportunities. But speaking about risks, you certainly don't want to be overexposed to consumer-related stocks right now because uh, consumer confidence for June has nosedived to a three-year low following several interest rate hikes. Now, this isn't a surprise, Jace, but uh, would you like to elaborate? Yeah, that's right, Ken. It's certainly pretty pretty weak in consumer land. And Domino's Pizza delivered what you might call burnt crust this week after the company released a less than satisfactory update indicating that same store sales growth for the second half of the year was actually 0.2%. And this is falling well short of management's annual growth target of 3 to 6%. What's more troubling about this, Ken, is that the growth stagnation was mainly driven by price increases, while order count and customer numbers actually declined. The company is now focusing on restructuring the European business and also to cut costs as well. However, its financial health might be impacted, especially it's on the brink of its breaching debt covenants. Well, that sounds really concerning, Jace. Uh, fortunately, we did move out of that stock last year on the back of those heightened risks. And uh, within the consumer spending sector, though, we've also had to part ways with fast fashion jewellery chain La Visa. Although the company and the outlook under Golden Rule 3 appears strong, we are mindful that the figures may be overly optimistic due to decreasing foot traffic data, escalating costs with leases and labour, and also the delayed impact of rising interest rates on consumer spending. So for more information on this, our members can refer to our analyst commentary. And turning our attention to the corporate calendar, it's going to be another quiet week ahead. We continue to monitor retail stocks closely and star growth stock and star income stock premier is expected to go ex-dividend on Tuesday, the 20th of June. In this week's Under the Microscope segment, we're examining global biotech giant CSL. They've just announced a surprising earnings downgrade this week, which has shaken the market, sending the share price plummeting by over 8% at one point. But Jace, I realise that the nitty-gritty details matters here, but uh, the market announcement wasn't really particularly revealing, highlighting currency issues as the main challenge. Could you help our viewers really understand the situation? Yeah, sure thing, Ken. Management actually gave a little bit more details during the analyst call. They noted that negative currency shifts in the yuan, the euro, and the British pound, again, this is the US dollar, were the primary hurdles to FI23 guidance. To give you an idea, the expected negative foreign currency impact is around 240 million US dollars, which is a considerable increase from the 175 million that management provided at the one half 23 result in February. While the FY23 earnings are anticipated to reach the upper end of guidance on a constant currency basis, once we factor in these foreign exchange headwinds, the guidance for FY23 reduces to around 2.6 billion versus consensus estimates of 2.7 billion. As a result, we anticipate consensus numbers to pair back some of those growth expectations over the next couple of days. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Just remember our active risk section that does highlight all of these risks so if you think about investing in any of our star stocks just make sure you're comfortable with those risks but beyond uh, financial year 23 management did offer a preliminary outlook and this was about 14 percent below consensus forecast intriguingly they did not specify what triggered this downgrade and it seems to be a blend of ongoing foreign exchange difficulties and also slower than expected recovery in the plasma business. And uh, you know, interestingly, an emergence of a generic competitor for its newly acquired iron deficiency unit called Vifor. Yeah, that's right, Ken. You've, you've hit most of the points there. 
Management flagged only a moderate recovery in profit margins from its bearing blood business, and this is due to persistently high labor costs and also inflationary pressures in the U.S., offset only by a very small reduction in plasma collection fees. These factors, along with the approval of a generic drug for iron deficiency by rival company Sandoz, might compel the market to pare back some of their near-term growth expectations for CSL. And it's important for members to note that the updated financial year 24 earnings guidance from management still indicates a growth rate of around 15% at midpoint. Moreover, remember that the forecasts shown in Stock Doctor are in Australian dollars, so the figures might not exactly match management's guidance, which is provided in US dollars. And considering that CSL share price has been adjusted downwards by nearly 10% this week, does the discount to valuation represent an opportunity for investors? Yeah, that's a very good question, Ken. The company's share price is trading at a discount to valuation. However, investors need to be mindful that consensus price targets will be revised over the next week or so. This downgrade will no doubt dampen investor sentiment, but over the long term, we still see an opportunity in the stock given its growth profile remains intact. And lastly, Jay, some members may have noticed that the remuneration details for CEO uh, Paul McKenzie is not there. And uh, this is because he only assumed the role in March 2023. So updates to the company's executives uh, remuneration will be announced during the August reporting season. With the end of financial year approaching, a useful question for members is, how can Stock Doctor help investors with their tax reporting, Jace? Well, firstly, the portfolio director can help clients monitor the stocks in their portfolio, providing performance metrics and also reports as well. But no matter how good a tool is, can, there's always a level of input required from the user. The first step is to ensure that your holdings accurately reflect your broking accounts. This can be accomplished under the Securities tab. Down below, you'll see your dividend payments, which are automatically generated by Stock Doctor. But it also pays, and excuse the pun, can, to double check that this amount is correct. Uh, very good, Jason. Uh, and you can also view your income and capital gains or losses by clicking on the report tab. The income section links each amount to a tax return label reference to make the process of filling tax returns a lot easier. And the capital gains section will review any gains or losses you have made during the financial year, including the option to bring forward any capital losses from previous years. Under reports, you can also see your historical transactions and portfolio returns. Now, to generate that all-important report for your accountant, simply click Save to PDF or CSV, but make sure you select the right date range as well. And this is very important. For other asset classes such as cash, bonds, or property, you can refer to cash and term deposits and other assets. This will ensure the calculations for your entire investment portfolio is accurate. And if you have any other questions regarding Portfolio Manager, please feel free to call our team at Research or your Client Relationship Manager. Yeah, thanks, Jace. Uh, that's all we have time for today, but I uh, really appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for having me again. And um, if you have any questions with today's episode, feel free to participate in our Lincoln Live webinar this Monday. And with the end of financial year approaching, it may be a good time to introduce Stock Doctor to your family and friends so that they can take advantage of the upcoming promotion. You can either do this by the Refer a Friend tab or send them a link to the free trial page. So to summarize today's episode, investors should not fear major systematic events that could lead to significant market volatility. Focus on the long term because markets will eventually recover and prepare your portfolio through risk management strategies. Invest according to your stage of life and risk tolerance. Focus on those financially healthy businesses and maintain a diversified portfolio with cash on the sidelines to take advantage of those opportunities. Have a happy, healthy, and prosperous week ahead. <music>